be taking a look at the Ryobi PSBRS01B 18 volt brushless cordless compact one hand reciprocating saw. They really need to figure out a shorter name for this thing. Starting off at the bottom of the tool we have the 18 volt battery saw. The saw will accept any size 18 volt battery from Ryobi. Next up we have the one handed grip as well as the variable speed trigger and the locking switch. The variable speed trigger has about 20 to 21 different speeds and they're fairly well defined but when you start dealing with 21 speeds in a trigger there's only so much definition that can be found between different speeds. So overall very nice to have that many different speed options built into the variable speed trigger. Next up we have the motor housing as well as the air ventilation holes in the motor housing. The top of the motor housing has been encased in a rubberized gripping material which comes in handy when you need to hold the saw two-handed when you're dealing with a tough project. This is definitely a useful feature. Next up we have the blade release lever. In order to change the blade you must pull the lever upward and then you can insert or remove the current blade. Once the blade is in place or you've removed the other blade you may let go of the lever and the lever will snap back into the locking position. On the front of the tool, we have the front LED light. The LED light becomes active when the trigger is pulled and will stay active for about 10 seconds after the trigger has been released. The light is not incredibly bright, but it's not incredibly dim either and will provide a decent amount of light for anything in front of the tool. So overall, not, not too bad. Next up, we have the blade clamp or blade holder. When you pull up the blade release lever, this is what you will stick the new blade or remove the blade out of. Next up, we have the shoe. The shoe is what you hold against the object you are cutting to keep the saw firmly in place and to prevent vibrations. It will also help with making the cut quicker, faster, and easier. When I first got the saw, the shoe was quite stiff and it took a little while to break in, but now it is very flexible and very easy to use. So just keep that in mind. And last but not least, we have the blade. You know, for cutting things like pipes, boards, pallets, nails, you name it, you can just about cut anything with the reciprocating saw, except for wasteful government spending. And that is it for the general overview. So here's some views to show you how it looks and how it sounds. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the build quality of the tool. While in the background there's a video of me using completely the wrong kind of blade to saw a branch off a tree. I really should have gotten the right blade, but oh well. The build quality of the tool is extremely nice. There really is nothing on the tool that I dislike, which is really unusual because I can usually find something to dislike. The rubberized grip is nice, the length of the tool is nice, the way of the tool is nice. The shoe is nice, the blade release lever is nice, everything on the tool is nice. The trigger feels nice, it's not too gummy, and it doesn't engage too early or stop too soon. So overall, the build quality the tool is extremely nice. I think it's almost at the same level as you'd say something from DeWalt or Makita. So overall, props to this tool on the build quality. It definitely feels like a premium tool in the hand. Now, one-hand tools can be a little bit heavy for one-handed extended use if you're just constantly using it. I didn't really find it to be too much of a problem with this tool, however. I was able to tear down a 4x8 pallet, which was made out of at least eight 2x4s and a bunch of smaller boards in about 45 minutes, and my arm really was not that tired by the end of it. Now, the battery life on this tool is, I think, perfectly adequate. It's not going to blow your mind by any regards, but it's not going to be incredibly short either. I was able to tear down about one and a half 4x8 pallets with this tool before I had to change the battery, which was a 4 amp hour battery, 
and it did a good job. Now, please keep in mind I was using an HP battery, not one of the standard batteries, so that gave me a little bit better runtime and performance. But honestly, I think it's perfectly adequate for what this tool is capable of. Now, I've been using this reciprocating saw for quite a while at this point, and I just made the video. So the pallets I'm breaking down were not the same 4x8 pallets that I broke down previously. So it always depends on what kind of nails you're dealing with and other stuff as well. But I honestly really enjoy using this reciprocating saw, and it's my current go-to reciprocating saw, considering that I'm not a very big fan of the bigger, badder, heavier-duty reciprocating saw that Ryobi released. And I briefly explained in another video why I wasn't a big fan of that one because of some design choices on it. But I think this one is actually one of the best ones that Ryobi has made so far, so I definitely am a fan of this saw. And in the world of cutting metal, this saw actually did a fairly good job, as long as you're using a high-quality blade. Now, the blade I was using was not a high-quality blade. It was a cheap $5 blade that I picked up at Menards, and it really wore out quickly. But that wasn't the tool's fault, and the tool did an excellent job. It did get a little bit hot by the third cut, and I did let it rest for a little while, but it did an adequate job, and for a one-head reciprocating saw, I think it did perfectly fine. I've always been under the firm belief that if you're going to be cutting metal, you should probably be using a corded reciprocated saw with high quality blades. Or a grinder if you can use that. I just don't think one hand reciprocating saws are quite built to be able to do that constantly like some people like to do or have to do. For me personally, I don't cut a whole lot of metal so it's perfectly adequate for my needs. And of course something else that helps when you're cutting metal is to have it properly secured and not secured by two Harbor Freight clamps. I really need to get a vise. It's on the to-do list, but I have a very long to-do list, so you get the point. Now let's talk a little bit about the weight of the tool. When you're using a tool with a 4 amp hour battery and a blade, the tool will weigh right around 2,357 grams. And without a battery or a blade, the tool will come in and weigh right around 1,619 grams. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this tool. And the first pro is... You guessed it! Brushless! Saws really do benefit from being brushless, and it really does help to increase the runtime and performance of a saw. So having a one-hand brushless reciprocating saw is definitely a big pro in this category. 18 volt. 18 volt is about the perfect voltage for handheld power tools, excluding outdoor power tools such as blowers and mowers. 18 volt will be able to get the job done roughly probably 80% of the time and those times where it won't be able to get it done there are manufacturers who make bigger voltage tools that will be able to get the job done but for me personally 18 volt pretty much handles anything and everything I throw at it so I think 18 volt is definitely a pro for this tool plus if your main tool line is not Ryobi you can find adapters on eBay and Amazon for anywhere from about $10 all the way up to $50 and you can adapt other brand batteries over to Ryobi fairly easily which is a good way to go. Next up, build quality. The build quality of this tool, I think it's very high. I, nothing on it feels cheap and the whole thing feels very well put together. I've dropped it several times and it's that survived just fine. It's a good tool and it has a good feel to it. It's one of those kind of tools that you just hate to put down because it feels so good in your hand. So I definitely think the build quality of this tool is A plus in my opinion. Grip. The grip on this tool I think is about the perfect size, at least for me personally. Somebody with larger hands might not find it as comfortable to hold as I do because I have smaller hands, but for me personally, I really like the grip on this tool and I just really enjoy using it. Size. This is a good little one-hand reciprocating saw. It's not too big, nor is it too small. Is it the smallest one-hand reciprocating saw on the market? No. But it is fairly small, and honestly, a lot of the ones that are smaller than this are usually 12 volts and not 18 volts. So the size of the saw, I think, is definitely a pro. And the last pro is the trigger. There's about 21 speeds in that trigger, and the definition between the different speeds is pretty good, considering there's 21 different speeds in it. It's not too mushy, and it doesn't disengage too soon or engage too fast. So definitely a well-designed trigger, and I enjoy using it. And the only thing in the meh category is the price. The saw is priced about $100, which is a pretty good price for the saw considering it's brushless. And most of the competitors in the same price range are brushed. However, you also have to consider that Ryobi doesn't exactly have the same reputation as some of these other manufacturers do. So you need to take that into account. But for me personally, I would definitely pay the exact same price that I paid for this again because I think it's well worth the price of $100. And the first and only con is stiff shoe at first. 
Now, when I first got the saw, the shoe was really stiff and not very flexible and hard to get into the proper position you would need to cut stuff. But over time, it loosened up and it's perfectly flexible now and easy to position. So definitely something that goes away with the use of the product. And that is it for the pros and cons. Final thoughts on this saw. Would I recommend it? Yes, I would recommend it. I think it's a fantastic little saw at a good price. I've been using it a lot over the last three weeks for different projects, everything from replumbing a pond all the way up to dealing with breaking down pallets to pruning trees. And it's been a fantastic little performer. I would definitely recommend it and it's one of my favorite tools to currently use. I think it's a great saw and I would highly recommend it to anybody who's looking for a one hand reciprocating saw that is either in the Ryobi system or doesn't mind adapting batteries over. So it comes highly recommended. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Peace out.